Hi, I'm Tom Geisel. At Sun National Bank, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, and by Wells Fargo. This is One on One. That's good acting, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a poor boy, I'm I get that a lot. I go to Atlantic City all the time, like, are you the guy? I go, no, I'm not. This is one you can't afford to miss. They thought that I wouldn't survive it, but I knew I would. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It's my pleasure to introduce you to John Rapinos, who is the dean of the Larry L. Lewing School of Business at Berkeley College. Good to see you, John. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Let's talk about the uh, program, the School of Business. What uh, majors are we talking about there? Uh, we have uh, a number of majors. Um, we have management majors, fashion marketing and management, accounting and finance. Uh, so we have a, a, a wide variety of degree programs. There's about 29 degree programs. One of the big areas I want to talk about is information technology management. What are we talking about? And this is a hot area, right? It is. It is. What are we talking about? Uh, Steve, you know, um, it's estimated we're going to spend $3.6 trillion on information technology in 2012. It's a lot of money. Uh, the question is, what are you going to get for that money? Mm. And so our program is really designed not to build technical people, real technical, but to understand technology and also um, management principles. Because really, you want to get the most out of this money. Give us an example of this. Because uh, sure. people hear information technology management, they, they understand the jargon, they hear it, but they may not, may not know what it means. Give us a specific career that we're talking about. Sure. For example, you might have a, a web uh, designer and developer, a web manager, a content manager. These websites that you see, they don't just happen by themselves. People have to manage them. The question is, what should they look like? Who are your target audiences? How should you design these? These are the kinds of things we're teaching our students. So it's so funny. People think, it's, oh, that's a technical thing. That requires some incredible critical thinking skills. It, it does. It does. And it all goes back to who are you, who's your audience. Uh, the te technical skills are one thing, you know, once you know what you want to design, who you're designing it for, then you develop the technical skills. But up front is, what do you want to do with this? That's yep. really important. Another related to area, network security. That's also an area what does that mean? we're teaching our students as well. Uh, I mean, it's in the news all the time about hacking, sure. yep. uh, you know, people getting into our government databases, people stealing your social security numbers. People uh, in the media hacking into... Exactly. You know, a lot of scandals there. What, what, where is the career there? Um, well, you have folks who actually un understand how to protect your computer and your data files. Okay? Well, that's critical in this day and age. I mean, the Internet now has opened up access to computers all over the world. Um, I mean, you see it in the news all the time. Uh, and, and that's what we uh, provide our students, uh, the technical knowledge of how to protect your computer and your data as well. Another interesting part of this, uh, the marketing piece of things, marketing communications. Social media, how has social media changed the way you teach the field of marketing slash communications? It's changed dramatically. I mean, you know, 40 years ago, we used to what, put a, maybe an ad in a, in a newspaper, okay? But these younger people now are a little bit more savvy than that. They're online right. all the time. They're on your Facebooks. You're on, they're, they're all over this place. The question is, how do you use this vehicle, because it mm. is a vehicle, to both attract new customers and to retain your current customers. And companies, a lot of companies are fearful of this. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the people who understand this kind of uh, technology. And so what's happening is we've developed a marketing communications uh, program that not only focuses on the delivery, how to use these social media sites, but also on the communications message. Yeah. I mean, I know that's your field. And the question becomes, who is your target audience? What message are you trying to get across? Do they understand what you're trying to tell them? You know, so social media is now here and now. The other area that I know is a big one for you, which is very important to our audience here as well, never goes out of style. Let's talk about the financial planning piece of this. What is the curriculum that we're talking about? Right. And why is it more pressing now, John, than ever before to teach it? 
That's an excellent question. This is a, a field that I'm very uh, passionate about. Uh, we have 76 million baby boomers in the United States. The leading edge have turned 66 this year. Right. Uh, the trailing edge is in their 40s. Okay. I am concerned about the 66-year-olds. Right. We have not done a good job saving for retirement. They haven't, they haven't done this. Uh, you know, in the past, we used to uh, count on three things to help us retire. Personal savings. Uh, the personal savings rate in the United States is pitiful. Uh, pension plans. Uh, companies have gone away from what are called defined benefit plans, meaning you know what you're going to get at the As end. As opposed to? Defined contribution plans like a 401k. Manage it yourself. Manage it yourself. Now, do people know how to manage it themselves? Exactly. They don't know what they're going to have at the end. depends on how, you know. How and a professional go. in the field can really make a difference. That's there. correct. That's correct. And the, the other, other piece is what? Social Security? The other piece is Social Security. And that's in the media. We know all about that. It's a <laughs> huge question mark. It's a political mark. hotbed. <laughs> right. uh, I wish our politicians, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, get to it and figure this that's out. That's a different, that's well, a it's whole a different, different subject, issue. but related. But the field of financial planning, you're Correct. saying hot. Hot, hot, hot. And what we've done at Berkeley College is we've created a uh, financial services degree program. A financial services degree program. Right. And basically, its focus is personal financial planning. So we are teaching students about wealth building, retirement planning, uh, estate planning, taxation, which really for everybody, everybody, they should know how can to Can you go this. online, part-time, full-time, what? What are we talking about? The answer is yes. You can go on-site or online. You can do it part-time. You can do it full-time as well. You're finding students looking for lots of different ways to get a college education Di more different, excuse oh, me, different in absolutely. ways than you've never seen before. Because more and more people right. are saying, I'm online, never did it before, never thought I could have that experience. Right. In our school, we have a lot of uh, single parent households. Right. Uh, they can't come to a campus at a certain time on a certain day. So the online environment works for them. I mean, all you got to do is look at the growth of online education. Right. It's, it's, it's booming. It is. And the other final piece I want to ask you about is there's a history of internships and the importance of internships. Give you 30 seconds, go. Internships are critical. One in, every th one in three students today have an internship. It benefits the student, it benefits the employer. From the student's perspective, they get experience. They get to see the real world, not just what's in a book, but on the job. Uh, they, the employer's point of view, this builds a pool of employees for them. Yep. If a student is, is really good, they can hire that student. Uh, it gives them a chance to see how that student operates in a real world environment. You have to come to work every day, you have to come on time. You have to be productive. And that internship provides that employer an opportunity to see you know, how that student performs. John Rapinos, who is the dean of the Larry L. Lewing School of Business at Berkeley College. Important subjects, particularly in these very challenging economic times. Uh, dean, thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Good stuff. One on one will continue right after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. The following a for Education segment has been brought to you by the New Jersey Education Association. There she is, Chanel Summers, who is the third grade math and science teacher at the Marion P. Thomas Charter School in my hometown of Newark, New Jersey. How are you doing? I'm fine. I heard a rumor. It can't be true. What's the rumor? You had a baby a month ago? Yes. A Congratulations. Month ago. Thank you. Thank you. And you've been teaching for how long? For two years. And you're going back at some point? Yes, I am going back. I heard your students are dying to have you back. Yes, they are. I, I visit sometimes. I'm sure they love you. Yes. The program, uh, by the way, this is part of our classroom close-up series we do in cooperation with our partners and friends at the NJEA. We're about to see a program from um, the classroom close-up series, a three-minute video, the SELECT program. What is this, the SELECT program? Uh, the SELECT program. What does it stand for? It stands for Scholars Electing Lifelong Scholars Character Transformation. What's it about? It's boys and girls doing what? Well, we have single-gendered pro uh, single gendered program. Uh, we have an all girls and all boys class. Um, basically, we are using the research that we've used or we've found right. to uh, teach 
these boys and girls. And you um, find that it makes a big difference? It does. All right, so let's look at the video. Okay. Relax, we come back, we find out more about you and more about the impact. This is uh, Chanel with her students, and this is the Select program, and it's powerful stuff. Let's take a look. Second and third graders at the Marion P. Thomas Charter School begin each day with the Select Circle. It's a co-ed school with four select classes, single gender, all girls, or all boys. Research shows boys and girls have different learning styles, and Select caters to those differences. A primary goal when Select was introduced here two years ago was bridging the achievement gap for African American boys. With the boys especially, um, with the behavior issues, a lot of behavior issues we saw with the boys in the co-ed class, but when we brought them to the single gender class, there were no longer behavior problems. Let's see who's ready. Nasir! The boys, they can quickly lose interest. So I'm very quick with the boys. Um, I mean, I know you've noticed the brain breaks that we take, um, and it allows them to get up and move, have that movement. They, they love to compete with each other. The boys, they, they love that competition. Uh, so the buzzers just allow them to do exactly that, compete with each other. Um, and they love the noise. <laughs> they love to hear the buzzer itself. It allows them to compete. It allows them to have fun with a subject that can sometimes be a little boring, you know? So uh, we integrate all of those different things. Competition, fun, numbers, all of those different aspects. A girl's physiological needs mostly are mental, mental stimulation from the brain, but they also need to be talking. They need to talk things out. They need to write and they need to talk. And it helps them solve their problems. I like that it's all girls because sometimes I get embarrassed and then people laugh at me, but they don't laugh at me, they're like my sisters. Girls also need to have fun when they learn with spelling games like Sparkle. E and Good. the Sparkle game, what we basically do is spell, spell words and, we, and the last person like that spells the letter, the next person after the last per the person that spells the letter, they sparkle and do a little dance. At first, some parents were skeptical about single gender classrooms, but the number of children placed in one doubled in the second year of the program. I just wanted him to be around young men and see how they grow up, you know, it's best to be. And then, you know, another part of it, honestly, you know, he has two sisters and I just wanted him to interact with more males. After only two years, there's no hard evidence on the effects of single gender classes here, but teachers see improvements in classwork, in confidence and in setting goals. I want to be a teacher because I have, there are a lot of good teachers in this school and I want to be like them. I will do my best to ensure that I am a success. Go me! The power! Look at you. <laughs> what do you see right there? I love it. I really do. I think because I had them for two years and I actually saw the growth. Um, so it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And some of the parents, you, you heard some of the parents in the uh, piece. By the way, I thank you again to our friends at the New Jersey Education Association for producing, consistently producing quality video that helps in these discussions and also recognizing great teachers. Um, you've turned some parents around who said, no, I want my kids mixed and listen, because it, every parent has to make their own decision. Right. But for some kids, it does make sense to being in a class with only boys and only girls, right? Right, right. Um, we've had a lot of parents, our first year, we had a lot of parents that was against the program. And I think it was a lot of ignorance. They weren't familiar with what we were trying to do. So after one year of um, doing the program, um, they saw what we were, we were capable of and, you know, we were able to really persuade our parents to run with this program. One of the young ladies I saw in the uh, piece she said people used to make fun of me. She said, now they're my sisters. Right. You think that's more likely, Chanel, in a, a situation which, in which there's only one gender, more my sisters? Well, our first year with this class, 
particular all girls class and all boys class, when we first developed this program, we felt it was important for us to build character um, with also building the academic portion as well. But we, we thought it was very important for us to build character. And when building character, the first thing we thought of was a sisterhood or brotherhood. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what really brought that connection. You know, we, we told them that, would you treat your sister this way or mm -hmm. would you do this to your sister? So that's how we, we, we thought it was very important for us to build that character. And so um, that's why you hear a lot of our students that will say previously, you know, we had arguments with our classmates or we fought with our classmates or I was, you know, one, I was a victim of bullying. But now you see that sisterhood because we built that, that and character. And the boys? The same thing. Uh, with the boys, you you build that healthy competition. It's okay to compete, you know, and so that's what we do within the classroom. So because we have that healthy competition, you see that brotherhood. You don't see uh, unhealthy competition where they're they are um, maybe uh, going against each other. They are actually awarding each other. So if one brother gets it right, they are actually clapping for each other or, you know, doing those those things to really uh, reward each other. So, you know, that's something that we taught, you know. I'm sorry for interrupting, Chanel. Do you, is there a part, hmm, are they less, dis I hate to use this word, <clears throat> but I'll use it anyway. Are they less distracted by not having someone from the other gender, uh, a young boy, not having a young girl in the class, are they less distracted? They are. I, I can speak for the girls. Because I know I was awfully distracted as a young man, as a young boy going to school in Newark. You know, right. That's where I went to school. Distracted all the time <laughs> by young ladies. Uh, when, I, when I was in the first grade class, you definitely saw the distractions. And, I mean, for boys, they like to tap on the desk. They like to sit improperly. They, they like to do all of these things that can be distracting to the girls. But now that they're in a, a class full of boys that like to do what they like to do, it's not a distraction for them, you know? How much you, uh, before I let you out of here, question I ask every teacher, one to 10, how much you love it? I love it. One to 10. One to 10, 11. That's the number it. that keeps coming up. I love it. Still. I love it. Even in a challenging urban environment. I love it. All right. That's the most rewarding. When because it's a challenge, it's the most rewarding when you see that they overcome everything that they're faced. They're lucky to have you. You're lucky to have them. Yes, I'm very lucky. Keep it up, all right? Thank you. Come back and give us a progress report. I will definitely do that. Chanel Summers, a new mom. Yes. Only one mom, third grade math and science teacher at Marion P. Thomas Charter School in uh, beautiful Newark, New Jersey, my hometown. Yes. Good things going on there. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you. Keep it up. We'll be right back right after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. It takes over the mind. She was incapable of thinking. So we lost her a long time before we actually physically lost her. It was just, it was just awful. And every day of her life was painful. It was not, there was no joy in her life whatsoever. She was the eating disorder. You know, she became the eating disorder. Powerful stuff. I want to introduce our good friend, uh, hasn't been here for a while, and we're glad she's back. Deb Alfado, Vice President, National Board of NIDA, the National Eating Disorders Association. And I want to thank our friends from NIDA for providing that video. And thank you for um, having us. Let's put uh, some numbers on this. And we'll put a face on it. Uh, 11 million people suffering from an eating disorder, right? That we know about. That we know about. There are three main eating disorders. Uh, anorexia nervosa, binging, bulimia, right? 
binge eating disorder and bulimia. The yeah. two more common are anorexia and bulimia. And binge eating disorder is uh, really gaining momentum. Yeah. Uh, Deb, because we've known each other for such a long time and we've done lots of different programs together for a long time, Coleman yeah. uh, Foundation, and also you brought us to NIDA, you brought us to this issue, we would not, frankly, be, I don't think we would have done programming on the subject if you hadn't brought us to a, this to us. But you got to the subject, this issue, because of personal connection. Talk about it. Well, it couldn't be any more personal for me. Um, my daughter, Lindsay, my one and only, center of our universe, um, faced this disorder when she was 12 years old. She's now 28. Who's now 28. I saw it happening right before my very eyes. I saw her shifting behaviors. I saw her suddenly become vegetarian at the age of 12, eliminating fat, um, stopping her period, um, making some lifestyle changes that were dramatic for a 12-year-old. And it was frightening as, as it possibly could have been. And um, once it starts, it's like a locomotive, um, mm. especially when you have someone like my daughter, mm. who everything she does, she does with tremendous determination, good or bad. Right. So it got way ahead of her. Yeah. Um, it, 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 you know, it built momentum, but it goes on for years. And to hear the mom who um, we saw in the clip say it becomes them, it becomes their identity. They don't think they can be anything without their eating disorder. And for you and Joe, your husband, who has been your partner, and, and uh, I mean, he's the best. Um, yeah, thank first you. First two strong so. people like yourselves who are strong leaders and who solve problems. How challenging was that for both of you? Absurdly challenging, <laughs> honestly. I mean, when, you know, when I, my work every day is providing support, help, guidance. For others. For others. <laughs> right. And when I couldn't reach the love of my life, my daughter, it was unbearable, just absolutely unbearable. Um, you know, they we, go dark. We should make it clear Lindsay's doing very well. Remarkably well. Because you know why? Because we never gave up hope. And ever. that's one of the messages. Get that out there. Because you ever. told our producers, never, never give up hope. Never, never, ever give up hope. On, on, their, on your darkest day, in their darkest day, just always trust and believe that they're in there somewhere. That that person that you know has so much to give and their life has so much value, just keep believing and keep telling them how much you believe in them. Throughout this entire segment, we've had the NIDA website and also the telephone number up as well. People can call 24-7. Question, tell parents out there, any friend, concerned family member, what are the signs? Um, lots of shifts in behavior, um, l mood changes. Um, it's, it, the, the depression is a huge factor in this. Um, isolation, uh, you, you know, just just removing themselves from the things they love. Excessive exercising. Uh, can oh, be. That's, can be. That can be part of bulimia. You know, bulimia is typically known as binging and purging, right. but purging doesn't necessarily mean throwing up. It could be excessive ex ex exercising, right. to your point. It can be that. Do you find that, I mean, given your involvement with NIDA and you now you're on the very high level position, executive with the organization, do you find in your advocacy work that there are some parents some who just don't get it, who don't see it, and others who don't want to see it. More who fear seeing it because it's so, um, it's, it's a dark disease. Um, dark. It, dark because um, there's such shame <clears throat> associated with it. The person suffering is tremendously ashamed of themselves. They don't want to be behaving and acting the way they are. And then the family is, oh, Oh, is this a mental illness? Well, yeah, in is fact, it? oh, it's absolutely a mental illness. As a matter of fact, Steve, anorexia is the number one, 
suicide of mental illness, anorexia is the number one cause. cause yeah, it is of of suicide and death of mental illness <clears throat> of all the mental illnesses, anorexia and and often you say it, it can happen because they starve, but it also can happen. Their bodies are so broken down that they just can't take it anymore, and they take their life. In the, in the time we have left, the minute we have left, the message of parents, other than don't give up, other than looking for the signs, they see the number on the screen, they see the website right now. What do they do? What do you, what do you, what do you want them to do as oh the my, advocate that you are? I want them to use Nita. I don't know what I would have done if Nita and Lynn Grief, our CEO, hadn't come into my world. It came into my world when I needed it the most, and they, they were a resource. They are the resource in, in, this, in this disease. They, they're it. They, so you can't do it alone. Oh, impossible, impossible. You, you have to allow yourself. You know, I have this bracelet on, and it says it's time to talk about it, and it is, yeah. because everybody knows somebody, and it is really time to talk it's about it. It's time to talk about it, and um, we're glad that you came here to talk about it, because I know you made a difference, as you always do. Thank you, Thank Deb. You. Thank you, Steve. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Company offers policies that can protect against auto accidents, fires, windstorms, floods, and many other serious and urgent situations. Tips on what to do before, during, and after you're confronted with the unexpected are on the Emergency Preparedness section of NJM.com. New Jersey Manufacturers, helping the Garden State prepare for the unexpected for nearly a century. I'm Steve Adubato. Join me for the next edition of Caucus New Jersey Taxes, Healthcare, Education, and the Economy. I'll ask the questions that you want answered. Airing on NJTV 13 and WHYY. Check your local listings.